Hey guys, Stu from Touch Loops here uh, with another video tutorial. Uh, this one has been highly requested uh, how to program realistic drums. So I'm going to show you how to do that now, starting with quite what I would describe as the most accessible way of doing this within Ableton, all the way through to some weirder ways of you know adding life to your to your drum clips um so let's start off with this first one number one i've got this kind of hip-hop loop here which i've made and it's pretty straight on the grid yeah so not very exciting but some cool sounds, which is a great place to start. Um, yeah, these all work really well. So I've just grabbed these from uh, the Hip Hop Breakups pack that we released. Some great one shots in there for hip hop. Um, so the first thing you wanna do, I would say, is go down to Groove. And uh, there's a little refresh icon here. Uh, and this is within the MIDI clip itself. And the MPC presets I find are the best. It kind of lets you preview the pattern. So I'm gonna be pretty aggressive and go to like 59. Drag that down to where it says none underneath groove and then commit. And that'll apply that groove to these MIDI clips. If we play that now, You can hear it on that kick there. You can take this even further. Let's take it to 67. Mm. You can really hear it on the this kick that's falling onto the one here. Let's hear it against a click. Nice. Uh, so that's a pretty good start already. Real drummers, as everyone knows by now, uh, won't play right on the grid all the time. They're going to drift. And that drift really has become such a huge part of uh, drum programming, I think. Um, along with that uh, idea that drummers don't always play perfectly in time, they also don't play... 100% velocity all the time, you know, uh, ghost notes are a hugely important part of bringing a pretty simple loop to life as is just generally floating between softer and harder hits over a beat. So these hats are all at one velocity. Uh, one way manually to kind of vary that up is to hold down uh, command and you can drag between two values for all of them or just every other one. Nice. And this is especially useful, I find, when looking at MIDI clips that fall onto another. Uh, so let me make this a bit bigger. So, these two kicks, when played realistically, won't be the same velocity. One will have more power than the other. Uh, and it's usually the kick or the snare that's about to fall on to the beat that will be slightly lower in velocity. So you'll hear that here. Hopefully that makes sense. Like that. Uh, we can do that on claps as well. And really soften that up. So yeah, th this this loop would get pretty boring for a drummer. But we can add sort of little flourishes in with this idea of using softer, oh, using softer MIDI clips to kind of fill in the gaps. So at the end of this phrase here, I'm going to add three extra hits 
that are kind of softer in velocity with the middle one maybe being a little higher and the ECU being a lot lower. So really simple, this isn't in any way a complicated beat. It's probably about as simple as it gets. But just by using no plugins, nothing, just editing the MIDI velocity and applying a bit of groove, you can really make it interesting and bring it to life. Okay, secondly, you can get Ableton to do all the work. Uh, random and velocity are really great together. So if we drag, velocity onto our drum rack and set the output of the well the MIDI value between I don't know 72 and 104 let's turn random up maybe a bit of drive and a bit of compression and play that that's still a little let's expand this nice yeah it's just uh, randomizing all the velocity in this MIDI clip so these three hits between these two values um, and it's 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 very easy but I find it on drums to be a little unpredictable um, you don't want some of these kick sounds say or these snares that are on the the two and the four and the, the kicks on the one and the three you don't want those to lose power you really just want these uh, in between hits to be softer um, so the first way is probably, you know, manually going through and doing it better. But, um, if you're in a pinch or if you're doing this with something uh, musical, uh, you know, an art line or something, then, uh, velocity is a really great quick way of doing that. Okay. Third trick, um, get Ableton to again, do all the heavy lifting, but, uh, in a much more specific way. So... Ableton has a really great ability to convert audio to MIDI um, and we can basically extract uh, groove information from a, a real uh, drummer, an audio track of a real drummer. So from uh, our Disco Nuovo pack, um, I've got this beat. Cool. So you can already hear loads of drift and groove and velocity information in there. So set the session to the same as the, the loop so we don't have any stretching or anything like that. Uh, I'll drag it into onto an audio channel and then drag that straight onto our drum rack we were just using. It knows that uh, it needs to extract uh, rhythm information and not melodic information because we have a drum la uh, rack loaded. Let's get rid of that velocity plugin. And Let's just see how that sounds. Okay, a bit weird, but that's because it's defaulted. It's put the kick and the clap in the right place, um, but it thinks the hi-hat should be here. So let's just move that up. Okay, closer. Uh, let's go in and we know that there isn't going to be a clap uh, here because we can't hear it. Oh. We only have a clap on the on 1.2 here. So let's delete that. And here, here and here. Great. So on the hi-hats here especially, we can see uh, the range in uh, velocity. And if we zoom in, you know, some of these hits are, are 
pretty substantially off. I mean, you know, substantially for uh, MIDI, for a real drummer, this is, this is really tight. Um, let's layer them up together. Yeah, that's captured it kind of perfectly. And uh, layering them up together is a cool trick as well uh, for thickening up live drum sounds, just extract the audio to MIDI, um, add a digital kick here, say, and then you'll have both, just watch out for phasing and things. But um, So yeah, it's done all the work for us. If we get rid of that original sound now, and we can dial in exactly what we want from this beat. So as I said, the kick here on the on the down beat, I want to be full velocity every time. Um, that's not the case with this live recording, or maybe it is, and Ableton's missed it. It's not a hundred percent accurate all the time, but it will get you so close. Um, so I would actually say most of these kick drums could be full velocity because there's nothing bar this one that's very close to them. So if we wanted to put, say, another kick here that falls on, uh, this is another good point. Because we've extracted the rhythm from the audio track and nothing is quantized at this point, uh, this is slightly ahead of the beat, meaning my clip will delete the next one if I just, uh, you know, from, from all the way out here, if I just click there, it's gone. We don't want that. So you may have to go in a little closer. So we've got a soft kick here that's going to fall on to this one. There we go. And there we go. That's a really good example, I think, of if they're both full velocity, it sounds like this. You know, which has its charm, but I think if we're looking at trying to make this more realistic, So let's take this one step further and uh, go for something a little bit more complicated and see what Ableton does with it. Uh, I picked this beat because it has a lot of ghost note information. And it's pretty complicated. Um, so let's see what Ableton can do with it and what we can work with. And it's a, a good way of talking about ghost notes because they fill in the gaps between the, you know, the main hits of a beat in such interesting ways. Uh, so I'm going to halve the length of this to make it a bit more manageable, drag it down, and there we go. Let's see what Ableton thinks is happening. So I'm going to play uh, just the MIDI here. It's pretty good. Um, so if we listen to the original again, there are only hi-hat hits on the offbeat. So I, so what's happened here is Ableton has presumed that these uh, ghost hits on the snare in the original beat must be hi hats, um, which is really easy to extract because the velocity information is so much lower already. So a quick way of, sorry, selecting all of that is um, down here you have the velocity panel, which you can access with this little triangle down here. So you can hide it and then open it up, where we can see the uh, uh, velocity level of every hit. And I've basically just made a box like this by clicking and holding that only selects the softer hits. And now we've captured pretty much all these uh, low velocity hits. And we can just drag them down. I've made a little, uh, let's say like this, just a soft sort of snare sound that goes against this louder clap so we can really hear the, the difference. Uh, let's grab all of those. So firstly, uh, here, because uh, it thought this was a hi-hat, although it wouldn't know the difference anyway, Ableton that is, um, you wouldn't be playing a ghost note and a full velocity hit at the same time. Um, so we can just get rid of those immediately. Um, same here, where we have these extra claps in the second half, we can just get rid of the velocity information under those and see how that sounds. Sounds pretty good. Um, it's missed some of these flurries on the hi hats at the in the second half here, but we can add those in. They sound to me like little little uh, drags, um, like one-handed drags, 
uh, but we can program those in ourselves. So firstly, that sounds great. I think, uh, as you can see, everything is slightly off the grid, which is really cool, um, especially here. Uh, some hits are earlier, some are later, which is exactly what you want. So those little drags that we heard a bit later on, we can make those ourselves. Um, so let's say, yeah, so here. I'm going to just zoom in so we've got a bit to play with. So yes, as I said earlier, it'll delete that one if it's slightly too fast. So I'm going to halve the grid size and just sneak that in. Select all of them and open up our velocity window here. If you press B to switch to pen mode, as long as you've got all of these selected, you can just drag across and sort of chop them to the volume you like. And we kind of want this, uh, well, I'm going to try with this sort of rise up to the main hit. Let's see how that sounds. So turn pen mode off. Oh, uh, I should also add, I'm not playing, if you, you know, I'm not playing the beat from the start every time. If you select any point in arrangement view in a clip and hold down op, uh, option, yeah, option and space bar, it'll play from wherever you are which saves you so much time on drum editing. So that's a bit much, that sounds a little um, a little too much like a programmed beat. I think that might be because there are too many hits. Let's just try it with two. So that's better. Um, and we can sort of fine tune. I'm just gonna, so uh, obviously another way to to humanize drums is to just drag them around manually without using any kind of groove or velocity uh, plugin. So I'm just going to drag those about a little bit. Maybe listen to the original again and see. So actually, they're all kind of even in velocity, which is interesting. So maybe this is a good time to sort of level them out and see how that sounds. Oh, sorry. <laughs> with the MIDI. Maybe pull the middle one down. And really it's just a case of playing around until you get something. There we go, I quite like that. Um, what we're trying to replicate here, I suppose, is the bounce of the stick on the hi-hat, uh, like a controlled bounce, rather than a purposeful uh, rise in volume from the drummer. I think that happens twice, so I'm just gonna select oops, select the part of the beat and duplicate that. If we zoom in here, you can see obviously the uh, the hi hat playing here isn't exactly the same twice, so we can just go ahead and delete the where we've got an overlap here. This one must have been a little earlier, and the the original beat was behind it, which is why we're not seeing two. And play that. Okay, one more thing. Again, let's just check the velocity information on. So command, hold, holding down command and clicking the velocity information on our main down beats. So I'm just holding down oh, and dragging these ones up. Pretty great. Maybe let's drag these ones up. And basically anytime you have more and more MIDI uh, parts closer together, that's when you wanna, you know, they're not all gonna be full volume. So these ones in between are a little softer. But you dial in the sound you like. So yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Just a few little tips on drum programming. So cheers.